I'm always glad to be able to come together around the fellowship and the worship of believers as we give worship and honor unto our God. And so another beautiful day uh, outside um, and a wonderful time to come together around as the body of Christ this morning. So let us pray. Ono olo fa maoni yaso u malava ele mafai ona natia lo mato wanganga fa afitai awa ite fa maoni lava oi ele ni temi na mato fa anulongo ya au au o mai la upu ya te imato ile ala mato te sava valiai feso so ani mai lo mato fa alongo fa maluluina maswo to sina ina prea o mato loto ina ia mato talia le fato la upu ina ia fa pe ona mato wola ai a mato fata talia tu ile to e fio mai ona mato ali ima no mato fa ona o yesu keriso e ana tu ai le ne talo a mene ma a mene ia ma ne pa so e melo to see let us turn our bibles to the book of first thessalonians chapter 4 uh, verse 9 to verse 12 uh, we will be looking at today more more to saloniam ta ku fa fa nga ina fa ku iba sulu sultasi male fa ku sulu male mo ma na ita su fa tasi ma ita to tu si ya o sa unita to fa ita wina le upu ale tu a ile ni ta how first thessalonians chapter 4 uh, and we're going to be looking at verses 9 through to 12 Um, today is a very practical sermon. It's a very, very practical part of the Bible. Um, at the same time, it's such a powerful uh, part of Scripture that helps us live out our Christian life. Um, tau ona ola ile tsanga tsa kirisiano dela go tsa uno uta tso ile ba ino le tsipa ia po le tsile a paulo ite salonia ona ile a matsano le tsusi ile matsa a pwe fa sa fa pea ona a vatsu wa ia le fa ma lo si po le fa ma lo a le apostolo paulo ile e ka le sia ina o va aia o le e ka le sia e fa ma oni le fa o la ina o la tso wanganga Lena fa ape aia ya ya Paulo ile fa ipuna mua mua fa mai a ia fia fia mai ia ile atu ia te oto ia fa a sili sili pe ia oto o le manatu le na tala no ai Paulo ile kalesi ya ina ua maua o lo o o lo ia ila atu ile fa atu atu a o na fa ape ale o Paulo ia le fa atu atu a le na ua ia te oto ia fa a sili sili pe ia So we we now come to the portion of of the scriptures um and and the epistle of Thessalonians. Um and Paul um in the beginning of chapter 4 as he transitions from the introduction he's now gone into chapter 4 and this is where he starts to give instruction. But remember at the beginning of chapter 4 there was the transition point and the transition point was where he see he had seen he had heard the report from Timothy And he said to the church in um in verse 1 of chapter 4 he said brethren we urge and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more he heard about their faith he heard about the fact that they had become genuine christians his members he sent Timothy back and the report that came back Paul says Thessalonians now abound in your faith more and more Ona nga ile o Paulo inisio fa atonunga. O so ole ole tsana tsele ne o Paulo mana tsustusinga. A ele ngatsa ile ele ngatsa ile fa amalo si pole upu e feso so ani. A yai fo ile nganga fa leo leo ma moe a Paulo na tse fa atomu wai le e kalesia. So ba ya so le na tse ane ina tsa tso matsa matsa ile fa atso nunga mua mua be ye fa outu ile ola fa apa ia ina a ole ola fa apa ia ina le be yolana po pole mau fa pina fa ma mas 
kufaya paulo luba yaso na tia nei ole faba maina ile awa le faita anga a peyo o ina faba mafa ya ile tala noa a paulo ile faata ununga mua mua lea lana tatu ilo ai ile soifu wanga ole tangata te salonia saola ile tangata te salonia ise ola na tapua inga e aofia ile soifua faa pau pau yo na tapua inga <coughs> Lea lana tau mafai ei Paulo Ina ia vavae ese mai le tangata fao la ina Ma ia mauti noa Leo langa suhia O leo langa e vavae ese mai leo langa lea Faita anga Po leo langa sa holai Iona po faapaupau tangata ia Te salonia Ma naia ia le vaenga mua mua lea Pe a mata ia ile faatonu ale apostolo o Paulo so that when we looked at last week, the first point of instruction was sanctification. But the, the, the sub or the main thinking around sanctification was sexual purity. And, uh, and that was a, a point that Paul highlighted. Why? Because the, Thessalon, uh, the Thessalonica uh, situation was pagan worship. And pagan worship included prostitution, homosexuality as part of their religious practice. So the reason why Paul addressed this as the first point of instruction was to allow these Thessalonian Christians to understand that they had to be consecrated. So remember the meaning of the word sanctification was to be consecrated or to be set apart from a life of pagan worship into a life of New Testament worship, into a life of worship unto the Lord, which was honoring. And so we found out that sexual purity was God's will, um, that to be sanctified, we needed to know how to sanctify our own bodies, our own weaknesses, address our own, uh, you know, fleshly thoughts and lusts of the mind, and address those things. And the reasons why we learned last week was at the end of uh, verse 8, you know, God rejects um, those who are unclean. Ah, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, be, uh, therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who also has given us his Holy Spirit. So we understand that... Um, sanctification as a form of instruction was in order for us to know that we are doing God's will. And remember, we also learned last week that God is an avenger, ah, that he is a God of judgment. He is a God who will judge righteously. So, um, I ole manato le tai au le nei e ole tai au le ale nei tato te fia mata mata te ile fai pu fa e o ile fai pu o fai pu iva se o ile fai pu solu malelua ole wa ngai na le manato ale ale a Paulo ile fa cho nunga lo no lua ole fa cho nunga la dia tato te ba ai ai ile ilo wo langa savali ilo wo langa ile a mio e tatau ona e a mio ai. Iau ngai o inga, ah, pe o o mena no fa ya tsuai ana leila, o le launga le tsai au le nei, e e e e e ma fai ona e um iloai le awala ete ete olai ma e ngai o iai ilo soifu a fa kirisiano. So as we come into verse nine through to twelve, um, today's sermon is living out your Christianity. So that's why. We said that today's sermon is very practical because Paul moves into instruction number two. And instruction number two is, well, how, do, how does Christian living look like on the ground? You know, every day. What does Christian living look like every day in practice? Because remember, it's good to have theological knowledge. It's good to have um, understand those solid foundational truths. But Christianity at the same time is probably the only religion in the world that you can actually live in your life, your everyday living, whether it be in your home, whether it be at school, whether it be in your job. The Bible actually speaks to all spheres of your life. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. It's a very, very practical sermon today. Amen? 
So I think as we go through these points, you're going to see, oh, I can easily apply some of these truths into my everyday life. So let's say, how are you? ona <laughs> So let us read the word of the Lord, uh, verses 9 through to 12. I'll read in English. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. That you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. Uh, the first point of this uh, of the practical sermon that we're listening to today is to abound in brotherly love. So the first point that Paul highlights as he transitions into instruction number two. And the instruction number two is for how do we live out our Christian life? How do we, how do we make our Christianity practical? And we see the first part is to abound in brotherly love. Um, and the New Testament is full of this teaching of Scripture, that we must love one another, that we must love the Lord our God and love our neighbor. This is a strong um, scriptural teaching that is written across most of the Bible around loving one another. So when we look at um, Paul's letter to Tel uh, Thessalonians or the church in Thessalonica, he identified that this church did have brotherly love. We look at chapter 3 in that part of the letter. Uh, in verse 6 he says, But now that Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news of your faith and love. So he identified that the church had brotherly love. If you see down in verse 12 of chapter 3, 
Um, he says, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all. So Paul is recognizing that this church had love or brotherly love. The word brotherly love comes from the Greek word Philadelphia. And Philadelphia has two sub-Greek words. The first word is philos. And philos is a, a friend. So this is the kind of love it is. It's a friend or an associate. The second word there is adelphos. And adelphos is where one is born of the same parent. Or in this uh, meaning, it's uh, those who are born into the family of God. So the brotherly love, or Philadelphia, is the love between the brethren. It's specifically talking to love between Christians. So we see here that the church does not lack brotherly love, but that he's already addressed them. Right? He says that you are genuine because of your love for one another and also your love for all. So Le winga ole 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 mamu a mua lea a ya fa atele pea lea lofa. That when we look at rest of verse 9, he says, But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you. So he's saying, This is something that already exists in you, church at Thessalonica. And he goes on to say, For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. It's an interesting word, taught by God, because the Greek word or the original Greek word. Uh, means that uh, a person, this particular church, and Paul is addressing them, that they were divinely taught or instructed by God. In other words, um, they were instructed by the Word of God. And so we know that to love one another is a scriptural teaching, as I had highlighted before. So if you turn to John 6, 44 and 45, Yohane Ono Mtaupu Fasuma Fama Fapu Fasuma Lelimba if you read there in English, I'm going to quickly read in English and then I'll ask the Samoan Bible readers to read. Because this is the teachers, teachings of the Bible with regards to loving one another. And Jesus says, so these are the words of Jesus in John 6. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. So Jesus is talking about those who he will draw unto himself are the ones who the Father draws unto Him. 45. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from me, the Father comes to me. So this is a teaching from God. Ah, this is a teaching of loving one another. For me to see the name the <laughs> So that when we look at being taught by God, 
the divinely instructions, those things that are instructed by God, includes loving one another, the brotherly love. Let's look at some texts that highlight these verses for us. In John 15, John 15, uh, verse 12 and verse 17, Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. In verse 17, Jesus says, These things I command you, that you love one another. Lazy to see for a mauni eye, le mata upu ua oa o in eye, le eka lesia in a ia lofa ille auso, mo mua le yoane a alona mata upu etoru. In first John chapter three, verse eleven and twenty three, here the apostle John also reinforces the message of brotherly love. So for us as New Testament believers, this is what the Bible says. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11, it reads, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Amen? In verse 23 of chapter 3, it says, And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. So we see the message of loving or having brotherly love, the message of Philadelphia, the message of loving the brethren is an important and crucial teaching of the scriptures. So for me, I'm Ia lofa foi o ia ilona uso. Oe le tangata kirisiano le tae au le nei. A fai ol oe fa loto loto lua ile mata upu lea o lea lofa ile a uso. Mane e foi e fiso soani o le upu o lea tua yate oi. Mana tua o lota la nota ato e fa pe fea o na ngai oi. Fa pe fea o na hata mai lo uo langa kirisiano. Mua mua o lea lofa ile a uso. Ah. So how do, we, how do we put our Christian lives into practice? And, and it, it's, it's something that we hear constantly, but I think there's a reason why God wants us to continuously hear this message. That we must consider brotherly love. That we must consider, how do I know I'm a Christian? The first part that we see in the book of Thessalonians in our sermon today is how do you love the brethren? How are we loving each other? Consider your own practice of living that out. Do I love the brethren? Do I genuinely love the brothers and sisters in the faith? Do I love the body of Christ that we, that we pray for across the globe and across the world? How do I put that into practice? If I'm doing it so, how can I do it better? Because this is what it says down in verse 10. And indeed, you do so towards all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. This brethren at Thessalonia, at Thessalonica, they were example setters. They were bar setters. Because they said they not only loved the brethren in their church, but in all Macedonia. So when you say Macedonia, Thessalonica was the capital of that region. So they were the example setters of brotherly love in amongst that whole region. For many of you, I say, 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 Awa foi o fa pe lava on o to faya i a uso uma lava o i maketo nia a to uma ole o te salonia ole la mua ole vai mele ta o maketo nia a fa mai ole a lofa ole a uso le sa i te salonia pe wa a ve ma ta fa ta i ta i ole a lofa i le le vai mea a to a wa wa ma wa mai le a lofa le na a lofa i le a uso le a Ele o se alofa la titi a. O le alofa na avea ma alofa 
wa fai ma fa wa wa bi wa be ma lo fa e fa wa o ai le 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 vai me a to la ba le e ta u o maketonia so ina ta to te va ai ai le a u so le i te salonia sa fa a te le pe a le lo fa i le a u so so we see that there was a love for the brethren but let's look at the end of verse 10 because this is what Paul says he says and indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia but we urge you brethren that you increase more and more what a heart ah Paul doesn't say well done you're, you're, do, you're doing excellent Philadelphia ah you're the example of Philadelphia no Paul says but we urge you brethren do more and more in this part of his letter, he says, man, you know your faith? You know how you're doing really well? Do more. Do better. And then he gets to the love part. You know how you're loving the brethren? And you're loving them really well? You're the example? You're the trendsetter of what Christian brotherly love should look like? Do that more. Uh, do that better. And that's the, that's the encouragement for us as Christians. We might love the brethren. Uh, you must be doing really well. And I must say, the church at Peachwood, we love the brethren really well but the word of god today is saying do that better do that more uh, because the word there that is being used is is the word perisuo that's to do so more and more the meaning of the word perisuo is to abound and there is no measure uh, there is no fixed measure of the way that we must love one another for me to do more and more I familiar ku fa sa mo I o te apo apo ya tu i a fa a sili sili there o le si wing o le fa a sili sili e le ai se muta anga a e le ai se me ngata mai ai le lofa le i le auso o le ala ta va ai o lo wa lofa i le auso i a fa a sili sili there a wa ne ya le me ngata ai lo wa lofa i la auso a kirisiano o le o le o le O le matautia i o le awa onga lea, ona, a e mafau fau i ai, ya oe a malau savalinga, a whai na oe, e, e vai vai ngō fi alo o langa whaalea nana, a, a e o le alofa mai ma le piso so ani mai o le auso i le tino a keriso, e ma alosia i alo savali, a e o le mafua anga lea e nau nau ai le upua lea tua, i na ia whaalia le alofa o le auso, a ia whaa sili sili. Amen. So I just said in Samoan that this is a beautiful teaching, uh, the fact that we must love one another. But the reason why the Bible says do more, to abound more, because on our own, we're pretty useless, right? On our own, we're weak. On our own, we're vulnerable. On our own, we slip up. But when the brethren come around us and that we get the love from the brethren, we continually are encouraged in our faith. And first up, Paul's second instruction, after sanctification, he says, continue to love the brethren. The second part we see is in verse 11. Now we're going to come to verse 12. Let's read it again. So the second part of the instruction includes brotherly love and then he moves on to that you also aspire to, to lead a quiet life. That a Christian's life should be um, characterized by peace, peaceful living. It should be characterized not by obnoxious behavior, not by being loud and, um, and, and you know, animated all the time, 
but it's actually leading to aspire to lead a quiet life. But interesting that the word aspire in Greek means to make it your ambition. So it should be your goal to lead a quiet life. Uh, it should be your ambition to lead a quiet life. And the meaning of the word quiet there, it uh, comes from that Greek word that I put up on the screen. Uh, it's hei su hatsu. Hei su hatsu. That's the Greek word there. But that Greek word means not to be running around from here to there, but to hold on to your peace and to be quiet. So, what the Apostle is saying, aspire, um, set a goal, make it your ambition to not be busybodies. Ah, not to be going here over there, but be quiet. Eh? That, that's, that's what we should aspire to. And again, I'm saying today, our sermon is very, very practical. That you must look at your own life and say, wow, okay, the second set of instructions, Paul is saying to the, to the Thessalonian church, number one, love the brethren. And number two, make it your ambition to lead a peaceful life, to lead a quiet life. Um, and so, you know, in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 17, uh, verse 1, it says, Better is dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. We also know that um, peace is a fruit of the Spirit. And when we read in Romans 14, Paul also gives an application of peace. Uh, so in Paul says, in Paul's words in Romans 14, uh, Romans chapter 14 verse 17, and we read there, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And whilst we're here on earth, we're the, we're the image of the kingdom of God, are uh, Christians. And it says there that the kingdom of God is not in what we eat or drink. It's not in the traditions or religious practice. But it's actually in righteousness. How do you live out your life? It's actually in peace. And that's what Paul is talking about today. Be quiet. Ah, don't be a busybody. Don't stop going from here to there. You know, and, and that's what Paul was starting to instruct these believers at Thessalonica. That they were starting to be busybodies. And we'll see later on where he also addresses that issue. But he's saying, be still, be quiet, and have that peace. Amen? So, if you feel like you are not going to be able to do it, you will not be able to do it. You will not be able to do it. You will not Praise the Lord. Another practical tip. Amen. 
So, the third one uh, we see is in the next part of 11b. And this one says these words. Praise the Lord. What Paul is saying here in the next part, he says <coughs> in verse 11, verse 9 and 10 says that we must love the brethren, and he says, Perisuo, increase that more and more, abound in that more and more. Get into 11, and he says, aspire. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. Not a character of busybodies. Not a character of um, outrageousness. Uh, that believers and Christians must be characterized by their life of, of peace. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, in a practical sense, he said, aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business. And he's not talking about entrepreneurship here. Uh, so when we look at to mind is to execute or to perform... And your own business is to pertain to yourself. Uh, what have you got to do? What have you got to participate in, in God's work? What are you doing? Then get to it. Uh, rather than, hey, Susan over there is not doing what she's supposed to be doing. Or Jimmy over there, you know, he was meant to be here 8 o'clock in the morning. He hasn't turned up. You know? Rather than picking out what people are doing as part of the body of Christ, Paul is saying, mind your own business. What is your business? And, and we see that happening. So there was an issue that he was trying to address. And we see that in 2 Thessalonians. So in the second letter, he writes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. And this is what Paul says to the same church. For we hear that there are some who walk among you who in a dis uh, among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. So Paul identified this with some of the brethren at Thessalonia, uh, Thessalonica. Thessalonica. <laughs> Uamia <laughs> Paul also addresses it to Timothy. And remember, Timothy is a young pastor of a church. Um, and so, for me, Paul also addresses it to Timothy. And so, for me, Paul also addresses it to Timothy. I am a sunny for Ila to Male Paye, or let a no Paulo e Levainele for Fine Muli say by a ton or a calesia. I for me it's an atayer for me never aile paye for me feo aile a fale, Malia fale, ele nata for e in a lato paye. I saw on a tautala, Mamata mata fua in a venga nisi, Matauta la tala e mea le tatau. So, I have a ile ao a wina e Paulo o le ekalesia, ma va ai i upo Paulo e fa nga ina e ao a wile o le o ma moe, o lo tala no a mai Paulo in ile ile mea o lo o va ai i tutonu o le ekalesia e le tatau. So mea la pe o le o e mata mata fua inga wenga nisi o e so ona tau tala o e tau tala tala male le tatau. So, or buying a lie, a tattoo to the eye, a tamafaina, your farmer, mafaile, le fesso, so any moitato, 
o awala ta to te iloi o le savalina le po le ngayo ina le e tatau ile tangata kerisiano le awala le e tatau ona e savaliai so when paul talks to timothy and he's addressing um and we see here he's addressing widows in this specific part of his letter to timothy and in verse 13 he says and besides they learn to be idle they're wandering about from house to house and not only idle but also gossips and busybodies saying things which they ought not and so this is a teaching of paul for a christian believer he's that there's an example here but it also should be applicable to all of us that we shouldn't be busybodies that we shouldn't be getting into other people's business but like the word of um paul to the church in thessalonica mind your own business ah or in a way that people say today mind your role ah. <laughs> what what are you supposed to be doing and the bible clearly gives us what we should be doing if you look at Romans chapter 12, and Romans chapter 12 clearly teaches us that as part of the body of believers, we've been called to do work. Ah, you've been called to do and participate in the kingdom of God as part of the body of believers. Praise the Lord. So let us read verse um, 4 to 8. Uh, those of us with the New King James Version Bible will read read verses 4 to 8. Yeah. For doubt to each one a measure of... Oh, sorry. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. <laughs> Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So so Apoapoi, 
me alofa. So oro yai to tono le afionga pa i ale atua le fe au ita tau ona tato faya. Amen. So we see from the word of God that there are things that we must do. That a believer is not idle. That a believer is not a busybody. That we must strive and aspire to lead a quiet life. That we must love the brethren, but we must also mind our business. And what's our business? Our business, well, Paul has given us example and a list of things that we should do as believers. Whether it be people that are, are supposed to preach and, and teach. People that, um, that they're giving as part of their role. People that are, that who are encouraging. People who show mercy. All of these things and are included in the life of a believer. Amen? Amen. So, so far we've seen three things that Paul has given us um, that reflect what Christianity looks like. Number one, to show brotherly love. Number two, lead a quiet life. Number three, mind your business. Ah, amen? So, Toru va ena yu tatu iloa, e ili ata va ayo le kerisiano, mua mua, alo faile auso, lua, faia ola ise olanga e file mu tolu. Va ili ao fe awe faia, awo le va ayo fe awa isi, awo le va ayo le va la awina isi, ai va ai lava le mea o va la awina i, oe e le atua. Last one, va ena mu mu, o le va ipo suma tasi, fa mai le fai umo le fa ipo suma tasi. Yo to tam fai yo to no fo fi fi le mu ya fai ya to la ba fe au ma ya nga lu lue yo o to la ba lima be on a matter of fire to a yate o to the final part that he gives us in this exhortation this morning is that we must love the brethren two that we must aspire to lead a quiet life three to mind our own business look at what we are called to do do it and do it faithfully and then the final part, he says, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. The final point today is that you must be willing to work. A, a Christian must be a working person. And this is not working for the body of Christ. This is working for you to survive. Ah, this is for you to have a job. Christians must have a job to earn their living. Um, you know, once we get to that age, we were no longer working. Then that's that's great. Ah, but for us younger ones, you know, what is what is our role? Ah, what can we do to work with our hands? Because Paul was an example of one who laboured manually. Ah, he laboured, he worked for his earning, he earned a living, and he encouraged that throughout his letters. <laughs> But then there's a question. There, there was a question that I asked as well. Well, why does Paul say that we must work? Why does he address the believers at Thessalonica that they must work with their hands? And because he gives an example of these things, and there's a concern for Paul um, of, of what he was seeing inside the church. So this is what was happening. You can see later on in this chapter, chapter 4, verse 13 through to the end, uh, Paul starts addressing and gives instruction with regards to the coming of the Lord. If you look at chapter 5, you see that Paul will encourage the brethren with regards to the day of the Lord, or the teaching about the end times. So Paul was clearly teaching, or had clearly taught the church, about the coming of Jesus Christ, the rapture of the church, and the end times. See, that's all... So Safa peo na faalongo longo nisi o Thessalonia 
ma ua avea ai ma mafua anga ua le nga lulua e ai nisi ma ua whape ai tātou no nofo pea ma whatali tali a wā ua toia titi a fio mai Jesu so o le awa onga lale na le a lai fa mina i ai paulo ua avea ai nisi ma e ua mata mata fua i nga luenga nisi ma nofo nofo i lātou ma whape a ia awa titi tātou toia fa i nga luenga a wā wā lata mai le a fio mai o Jesu so le ma fua anga lale a fa i mai ai loa paulo i a nga lu lue o tou Yo o tō lavalima, pei o na mātō whaia tuai, yate o tō. The question was, well, why? Why is, why is Paul telling the church that they must work with their own hands? And we see that because the reason why he's addressing this is because he had taught them about Jesus' second coming. But at that point, the people, there were some in Thessalonica that started to believe that they didn't have to work, that they needed to just sit at home, get ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ or the rapture of the church. And so these were some of the issues that he was trying to address. If we look at Second, Tim, uh, second sorry, Second Thessalonians chapter three, uh, verse seven to ten, verse seven to ten. Lord Salonia alone tapu etolu fai pu fitu e o ilu fai pu se fulu. And this is where Paul is instructing the church with regards. So making sure that they work, that they must work hard. Okay, see if I tell my life, I put a fitu, e o ile fai pu se fulu. Here we go in New King James Version. For you, ia, for you yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge. But work with labor and toil night and day, and that we might not be a burden for any of you, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. So there, Paul is reinforcing that they must work for their food. They must earn a living in order for them uh, to, to make sure that they are well. Uh. So we're talking about living out your, your Christian faith. So if I tell my faith, I will so <laughs> I pay tai i a vea i ma to ma faa o wa o yate o to ina ia o to faa o wa o mai a te i ma to a wa sa to tu yai ma o to ua ma to fai a tu le nei mea yate o to te a fai e le fi a ma lue se tasi a ua nei ai fo i o ia so ah. O manatua le tala noa ta atou i ata va ai ao le tanga te kerisiano. Le la fai mai paulo, a e le nga lue, a ua wai te ai. A le ai se nga lue, e le ma fai o na ai le tanga ta, e le ma fai o na va ai a atatou ai na. So pe o le, o le awa o nga le nga o lo au mai a i le nei tai ao. E fa manatua i ata i tatou a, ma lo lava le nga lue i ata i tatou uma, o te i loa o tatou uma lava, a fai e le o le pensiona na wai i tatou, o le nga lue a. So all of us in the room were probably work, we're hard workers. All of us are hard workers. We're either pensioners or hard working. That's what we are. So well done on working really hard. But now we know that this is actually a teaching of scripture to have a job. If you're able, you must be working. And that's why when we look at society today and the need for the, the, need for the gospel, because some of these practical teachings is what the Bible clearly teaches with regards to hard work. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28, Paul writes to this church and he says, Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, 
working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. The other reason why we must work is that we may be able to give to others. Ah. Le punai le fesol faipoe, Lusuma valum tapue fa, famile and no nota inga ale apostol, Olen, Olen oi, Awani to in oi. Ay, le lay in a fama lossi oia, ingal wenga on a lima imea ma, ia maua e ia semia, e abatu i de uamativa. Lacy bafu amata to tinga rue, tausia ya inga, ima lofa in tamatamativa. Na ita ngata matitiva olo ya iti tono tato siyo siyo manga. Ale mafu anga fole na mafai yae. Ona tato ngalurue. So lela u tato matamata. Tolu ni vae nga e mafai yae ona iloa pe yata ba aya le tangata kirishiano. Momua alofa ele auso. Lua ola ise ulanga file muhu. Tolu ya faya au fe au. Fa lela u tato iloa. Ye ngalue malosi ya. Ye faina lwena. So we looked at four things today with regards to living out our Christianity. And this is very practical. Number one, love the brethren. Number two, uh, pursue a quiet life. Number three, mind your business. Hey, look for your role. Be faithful in it. Ah, find it, get it sorted, and, and work hard at it. And then the fourth part we see here is that you must work. You must work, earn a living so that you may have bread. Earn a living so that you may also give to those in need. And in closing, the reason why. Ise mea etasi. O le maa nei a ia o le mafua anga. O le maa mafua anga. Awa. O lo uso i fua va aia. O le ata va aia o lo o langa kerisiano. O le moli ma wola lea. O lo u tangata faa o la ina. Fa mei le fai upule na. Fa mei ina ia o tau. Sa va vali. Ma le mata ngo fie. Ie o i tuwa. E te iloa. Tele yo taimi ele mawal tato wa vanoa pe tu pa iyeo e fai tato tala inga pe tu fa lau track a. Ay o lowo langa lo fai le auso, o lowo langa file e mu, o lowo langa e fai ale leia fe au, o lowo langa fai nga luenga ma alosi, e va ai ele tangata o lo ofisa po lo tangata o lo otou nga lulue, e ese lava le winga o le tangata lea. Na le winga le nao le upuna, sava vali ma le mata ngo fie, Ie oi tuwa, o le tuwa le nga olo au maina, o tangata le fa au laina. Le ale mafu anga le fa mei paolo, ie i loa, awa le nga o na fa atali tali li toya fi o mei o Yesu. A ia nga lue ma alosi, a lo fe le auso, fi le mu, fai le le iau fe au. Aisea, awa lo mata mata mai le la lo langi. Ie oi tuwa, o e le fa au laina. E a vea lo soifua faola ina, ma moli ma uola o le faola tanga na e te tala noa. So let's just look at verse 12 to finish this off. Because it says, and this is the reason. So it gives us these practical looking things for a Christian walk. This is what our Christianity should look like. It's not a religious thing that we do on a Sunday. When you look at those things, that's every single day. You love the brethren every day. You mind your business every day. You live a quiet life every single day. You work hard every single day. So the Christian life is practical in every sense, whether it be in your home, whether it be in your job. But this is the reason why. It says, so that you may walk properly. The walk here is your life. It's how you, how you conduct your life. It comes from... Um, that Greek word of conducting one's life and being honest in your life. And then it says there that you may walk properly. And the meaning of the word properly there is to work, is to live your life honestly. So if you're living your life honestly by loving the brethren, by being living peacefully, by um, minding your own business, by working really hard with your hands, it says there that
that you may walk properly to those who are outside. And this is not people that are outside. The meaning of the word outside there comes from a Greek word um, that defines non-believers. So those who are outside are non-believers, but if you live your life according to the scriptures, your life becomes a witness of your Christianity to them. We might not all be like Tupai who's able to go out and give tracts or evangelize on a Saturday morning or be like, you know, our brothers and sisters that are able to go and give tracts. But you know your life when you love the brethren, when you aspire to live a quiet life, you know, when you mind your own business, you know, when you work hard, you know, people will start to look at you and say, there's something different about that guy. There's something different about that sister. What's the difference? It's Christ. What's the difference is that you're a walking tract. Hey, you're a walking evangelism tool in the way in which you live your life. How do we, you know, that's why Christianity is so practical. Because everything you say, that's why we can't be Christians that are obnoxious and loud and uh, that we're, we're Christians that are more peace characterized. Uh, we're characterized by our peace. In 1 Peter chapter 2, it says this, verse 12, it reads, Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Praise the Lord. Wapupula ya te ila to la o to a mio fa pe o mea e fa a ma la ma la ma i le la lo lang. Uso ma tua fa fini o lo o langa o le o langa e fa a ma la ma la ma i le la lo lang i le o lo opong sa. I finish off with Philippians chapter two verse fifteen, and this is a beautiful verse that applies to this part of Paul's letter, and he writes to the church in Philippians. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Ah. <coughs> the living, the outward living or the living out of our Christian faith is be so that we can be lights in a dark world. Praise the Lord. May you be encouraged by the word of the Lord today. We've looked at those things. Uh, living out our Christianity is about loving one another. It's about aspiring or make it your ambition uh, to live quiet lives, to mind our own business. Look at that list in the book of Romans 12 and identify where can I contribute into the body of believers. If you've got a job, continue in your job. Uh, work hard with your hands. Why? Because the world is watching. Outside is looking at the way that your your walk and your Christian living looks like. And that becomes the testimony. Amen. So we finish off with this verse 12.
but your lay mat tiba oto ise me tasi that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Yep, faman via telele atua so swali fo ile ukole atua ilau savali ile ne yaso ia maleva yaso lumanai no no swafo yesu. Amen. Tato tu lai. Oh, so yes, it's Talo in a tattoo to Talo for Tassi Mailia, for Tassi Mountain and it's a help. Tattoo to Talo. For Tailia Tua, Tailia Tua, Loaf Sosuani, Awala Ila Upu, Awala Ila Upu, Ile Nitao, Ile Nitao, Ofa Alomo, Ofa Maletua, Ile Awala, Ile Awala, Ole Kirishiano, Vaia. Ia faham pihak orang awal lofa, ilah awuso, nofo filemu, file leya ofe aw, aver matangata final wenga, awa olo oto atele ilato, oe mata mata mai, faham fikir ilah faham awoni olah upu. Olea uwa ovolai. Olea uwa ovolai. Ilea liswa fo Yesu. Liswa fo Yesu. Yala tuwa ile nitu tawu. Yala tuwa ile nitu tawu. Amen ni ma amen ni. Amen ni ma amen ni. We thank you Lord. We thank you for the truth of your word. Yes. That we are encouraged, exalted to look at the way that we live out our Christianity. And Father, amen. These truths can be applied in our lives straight away. Um, and thank you for reminding us that we are uh, living evangelism tools for which the world of non-believers would look and think about the things and the way that we live our lives. So blessed be your name for the truth today. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.